thank you for coming here today to help us celebrate, to help us celebrate the 10th anniversary of this remarkable institution, the Berkman Center. And also because this is not, this is, this is not a crowd that sits on its laurels. Also to think about what the next 10 years is going to look like. Our second decade of studying and shaping the internet and its impact on society. This has been quite a remarkable 10-year journey. The Berkman Center was founded by three visionary men, Miles Berkman, Charlie Nesson, and Jonathan Zittrain. Miles, I, I, I want to thank you especially for all the incredible support that you've provided us over the years and for being just a fount of ideas and of knowledge and of wisdom. And I'm so happy that Miles and you two, Carol Brookman, are with us today. Thank you so much. <laughs> Miles and Charlie and Jonathan had an idea for a kind of uh, entrepreneurial nonprofit within the environment of Harvard Law School a peculiarly non-entrepreneurial place sometimes. Miles, Miles said that his hope, he said this 10 years ago, he said that he wanted the Berkman Center to become the water cooler at the law school, around which students and faculty and anyone else who cared to might gather to talk about the internet and its future. The goal, I'll switch my metaphors a little bit, but the goal was to create a kind of experimental laboratory, a place where both new technologies and new ideas could be tested and examined and developed. And the gathering here this morning, this week, demonstrates the quite extraordinary success of that vision of Miles and Charlie and Jonathan. I look around here today and I see how many people uh, look to the Berkman Center, how many people in all kinds of different areas, all kinds of walks of life from industry to academia to journalism to the NGO world to the policy world and government all of you looking to the Berkman Center for ideas, for technology, for new ways of thinking about the world. Because that's what the Berkman Center provides, new ways of thinking about the world. During this 10-year period of really quite rapid growth, the Berkman Center has become a powerhouse in terms of both teaching and research. As, as dean of the school, I have a special interest in the way we teach our students. And here, the Berkman Center is simply incomparable. The center's faculty members teach as many as 10 or 12 courses in any given year. The Berkman Center's clinic has grown steadily from just a few students back in the early days to as many as 50 today with waiting lists, I have to say, of two or three or four times that. And I want to congratulate Phil Malone for his recent promotion to clinical professor of law a promotion which underscores the law school's commitment to leadership in the teaching of intellectual property and cyber law. And the Berkman Center's research has become some of the most trusted and impactful academic work in the world. And I'm thinking here of Terry Fisher's work on intellectual property, particularly in the entertainment industry. I'm thinking of John Palfrey and Jonathan Zittrain's Open Net Initiative, which is, of course, the initiative that um, explored the world of internet filtering uh, in China and many, many other countries. I'm thinking of Yochai Benkler's work on cooperation in our networked information environment. I'm thinking of Jonathan Zittrain's uh, new and path-breaking work on generativity and the perils uh, that it faces, the ways in which it is threatened 
uh, in our current time. So this is an incredibly, uh, uh, just, just an extraordinary record of research. And our commitment to continuing in that vein is again underscored by a recent appointment we've made. John Porfrey, now the executive director of the Berkman Center, will become uh, vice dean for the library and information services very shortly, taking on leadership of the world's greatest law library, indeed one of uh, the great libraries in the world of any kind, and essentially giving the Berkman Center an even greater platform on which to operate, where I think the whole library, or maybe all of Harvard Law School, will become the experimental laboratory that the Berkman Center conducts. Today I have the extraordinary pleasure of announcing that the Berkman Center for Internet and Society at Harvard Law School, that it has been its official title, is making another great step forward. Along with the president and the provost of Harvard University, I am announcing that this little 10-year-old startup is becoming the Berkman Center for Internet and Society, not at Harvard Law School, but at Harvard University. One of a small number of truly interfaculty initiatives at Harvard. This change is more than symbolic. It tells you something about what the Berkman Center has meant to this university and indeed to the world. While the Berkman Center will remain rooted here in the law school, it will be reaching out even more than in the past to draw upon faculty and students and other parts of the university and beyond to extend the great work that it has underway. Now it is my great pleasure and privilege to introduce Terry Fisher, the director of the Berkman Center for the past six years. His subtle but immensely powerful leadership has made possible the Berkman Center's many triumphs in that period. There is simply no program at Harvard Law School whose members, faculty, fellows, and students operate more as a team. And because that is so, there is no program at Harvard Law School that has a greater record of success and impact. Terry's hallmark quality as faculty director of the Berkman Center is to do two things at once. To encourage the members of the center and the participants in the center to be as lively and as creative and as playful and as entrepreneurial in spirit as they possibly can be. And given this group, that's quite a lot. While also, insisting on the highest standards of scholarly rigor and integrity and a remarkable seriousness of purpose with respect to teaching and research alike. To be playful in one's approach and also to be deeply serious in one's selection and pursuit of goals is a rare thing in life, but it is not rare at the Berkman Center under Terry Fisher's leadership. Terry. So welcome to everybody. Uh, already there's this wonderful energy in this room we're hoping to sustain for two days. As Steve Kagan indicated, the Berkman Center is now 10 years old. Um, a great deal has changed, has been accomplished in that time. Let me begin by just identifying a few of the more salient transformations, and then try to relate it to what we're going to be doing here. So, space. Not the obvious place to begin for an internet center, but nevertheless indicative of what we've been doing. The physical footprint of the Berkman Center has grown over the last 10 years from 
Charlie's office, where he and Jonathan developed many of the seminal ideas on which we continue to live. Research. We've taken on a host of projects of gradually increasing methodological complexity, some of which we've finished, published, and moved on. Others we're still pursuing. Spin-offs. We tend to generate ideas that in the best of times, take institutional forms and then move off on their own. So, chilling effects, Wendy Seltzer's project. Creative Commons, Larry Lessig's project. The first podcast was done at the Berkman Center. Global Voices, a way of reconceiving journalism, pioneered by Ethan Zuckerman and Rebecca, all flourish on their own now, uh, independent of us. As the dean rightly mentioned, we've added in recent years a thriving clinical program, which Phil Malone will continue to expand and deepen and try to reduce the waiting list. And finally, money, budget. The scale of our financial operations has grown to match the scale of our research activities. So from the original generous gift of the Berkman family, we're now supported by foundations, corporations, nonprofit organizations, and governments. So huge expansion. The zone in which the changes have been most dramatic and in the long run most important is people. People not just occupy but constitute the Berkman Center. Uh, as Dean Kagan indicated it's a thriving, intense, boiling group of people. We sometimes have friction. But we hope continue to generate ideas. The expansion of the group of people has been accelerating. It's most notable at the faculty level. So just in the last year, we've had several major changes. Yochai Benkler has joined us finally from Yale, an arrival that has transformed my own professional life. As the dean indicated, John Palfrey, who has been for the last six years the incomparable executive director of the center, is stepping down as executive director and stepping, stepping up as professor of law and head of the law school library, will remain associated intimately with the center, but now as thinker, shedding his administrative responsibilities. Cass Sunstein recently decided to rejoin the law school faculty and we hope will be lending us the benefits of his extraordinarily fertile imagination and insight into things technological. And last but not least, Jonathan Zittrain, one of the founders of the center, has recently been offered a tenured position here. We're hoping to lure him back from Oxford. Now, I want to pause on this for a moment. It's a matter of institutional self-interest. Uh, the brilliance of Zittrain's book, for which this conference is named, has earned him offers, not just from Harvard and Oxford, but from Stanford. And Stanford's trying to persuade him go there. So one of the tasks of the next two days, on which I need your help, <laughs> is to persuade him that this is his intellectual home, a project we're going to begin in about 10 minutes when we engage his book. Can we just start it now? <laughs> <laughs> How about like a cheer? This is what we're going to do. <laughs> one, two, three.
We've accomplished a great deal over the last decade, and to some extent, this conference is meant to be a birthday party that we've asked you to come here to join us in celebration. But it's also intended to be much more than that. Self-congratulation gets old fairly fast. So here's the larger, more important purpose of the conference. Berkman Center is today as the dean indicated, at a point of inflection, or if you will, metamorphosis. Yesterday, the president and provost formally approved our initiative, which has taken over a year to develop, to become a university-wide interfaculty, interdisciplinary research center. So I say we've been moving in this direction for a while. We have added already four sterling professors of disciplines other than law to our steering committee. And we've been taking on projects that, to be frank, don't have a great deal to do with law for a while. But this completes and will intensify our turn in the interdisciplinary direction. So that raises the obvious question, what should we focus on now? To what set of issues should we turn our methodological, our new and expanded set of methodological telescopes and microscopes? We have ideas, of course, on that issue, but we're eager for more. So selfishly, what we are most hopeful to get from this conference is um, thoughts from you concerning the topics that merit examination, and the ways in which they could be best examined. We're hoping to churn up, in other words, lots of hypotheses worthy of attention concerning the future of the internet. The format of the conference reflects that purpose. So we will limit, I promise, the amount of time we'll be talking at you. This is not to say that our discussions here will be formless. Each of the sessions will begin with a presentation of some kind designed to provoke and direct conversation. But in each of the sessions, at least half of the time will be devoted to conversation. In those conversations, I hope you address each other, not just the speakers. To encourage this, um, we're not only allocating as much time as practicable to open discussion in the plenary periods, but we've also set up a variety of electronic devices, most of which are described in detail in your packets. SL, IRC, Twitter, a question tool, and so forth, all of which are designed to encourage you to make interventions in the discussion electronically, and uh, soon we will have up here on the screen, displays of questions that are being submitted so that the participants can be referring to the electronic discussion as well as the real discussion. Another opportunity for engagement is the food for thought dinners tonight. These are meant to be small group dinners over you know, a table at a restaurant, led by one of the members of the Berkman community, so you can get to know this extraordinary group of people. Uh, there are a lot of these. To determine which you might be interested in attending, go to the berkman at 10org website, and there's a description of the Food for Thought in there. It's a sign-up sheet. And last but not least, as you can tell from the program, the first day today is reasonably scripted. We have four major sessions on different dimensions of the future of the Internet. Tomorrow, second day, is much less scripted. We have several sessions already planned, but many open, um, deliberately open 
blocks of time in which you are encouraged to identify and then run breakout sessions of your own. You're going to get more information as we go along today about the mechanics of um, proposing, advertising, and gathering people for these spontaneously produced breakout sessions. So that's the plan for the conference. Uh, if we're successful, we will first recruit Jonathan, second, have some fun, and third, and most importantly, learn much concerning how we should be spending our time during the next decade. So, so for, without further ado, let me turn over the mic now to Charlie Nesson, the founder and guru of the center, who will add his welcome, and then we will take up Jonathan's great book. Charlie. Hello, I am Eon, Dean of Cyberspace. Welcome to Berkman at 10. I am personally so renowned that I need no introduction, but perhaps you need to know something about our next speaker. Charles Nesson is the Weld Professor of Law at Harvard Law School. He was raised to be a real estate tax lawyer, but somewhere along the line he took a left turn. Professor Nesson has come to stand for the deepest values of the net, openness, individual freedom, and the inalienable right to make mischief. As the founder of the Berkman Center, Charlie has been innovative, supportive of others' creativity, and mostly a total pain in the ass. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Charles Nesson. Uh, just a few words from me. I, I want to thank everyone for coming here today, and especially those who were here from the beginning. I uh, mentioned Eric Wiseman, Tom Smuts, Dave Marglin, John Zittron, John Perry Barlow, Larry Lessig, Alex and Wendy, Miles Berkman, Fern, Eric. Welcome. This group that came together just somehow formed an explosive nucleus that went boom. And here we are, 10 years later. We're here to talk about the future of the net. My vision of the future of the net is the same as the vision I enunciated 10 years ago. Cyberspace is an integrated media realm of stories told and shared by digitally connected and enabled hearts and minds. We are the future of the internet. We are a good story. We live it, we tell it. Let us make our stories represent our values. Open code, open access open talk, open education. Let us continue to build Berkman Center, build Harvard Law School, build Harvard University, build university, build it so that it reaches all the way to the prisons of Kingston and other places around the world which are beyond our current digital divide. So I'm totally excited about what can come out of the next two days. Uh, we are the future of the net. Welcome. Thank you for coming.